Hello, my health and safety professionals. Once again, welcome to Safe Time Online TV YouTube channel. Our online tutorial for Nebosch International General Certificate, as well as other health and safety courses. We are still moving on with our syllabus in IGC, that is International General Certificate. And we are currently in the second element. Today's learning outcome, we are going to look at the occupational health and safety management system. So there are two widely recognized occupational health and safety management system that exist for systematic management of health and safety. Number one is the ILO 2001 and number two is the ISO 45. 101. So all of these, or both of these, follow or they are based on the formula, plan, do, check, act, management cycle. So the ILO 2001 can be summarized as policy, organizing, planning and implementation, evaluation, action for improvement and audit. So this is how the occupational health and safety management system works. I repeat, the ILO 2001 follow this system, policy, organizing, planning and implementation, evaluation and action for improvement and lastly, audit. So this is how it works. Now, as we continue, let's look at the second uh, occupational health and safety management system. That is ISO, two, uh, ISO 4501. That is ISO 4501. And in this, it is follows, it is an extremely, it is an extremely verified standard that can be summarized as follows. Context of organization, number two, leadership and workers participation. Number three, planning, number four, support, number five, operation, and number six, performance evaluation, and lastly, improvement. So this is the management system that it follows. So, so many organizations, they may join or they may get attached to one of these occupational health and safety management system, and they can be registered so that they can get satisfied on following this means of management system. So both of these are well recognized, but organization can choose which one fit their operation according to the type of business that they do. So we are going to look at the introduction of health and safety management. So the management of workplace and health and safety must be considered systematically within any organization of any significant size. Any organization, whether big or small, must follow and recognize on how to use this occupational health and safety management system. So in the same way as any other form of management, a systematic approach to the management of an organization of in health and safety is referred to as occupational health and safety management system. So there are two common that I've already mentioned. And here we are going to look at the formula of both of this management system, that is ILO 2001 and ISO 4501. Now we've already said it's following the formula uh, plan, do, check, and act. And here it is well summarized. That is, it is based on PDCA, that is plan, do, check, and act. Now, 
What is plan? Plan is the first one because it refers to set. It refers to the organization to set the aims and objectives and the goals so that they can achieve them. The second one is do, which is related to you put your aims into action and implement them. So the first one, you set your goals and aims of the object uh, and objectives of the organization. Then the second one, you implement your objectives so that you can achieve them. The third one, you check. So check means you monitor your performance towards the aims and objectives that you have already set yourself. So the organization should plan. After planning, they should act on the plan. And third, they should always check on the plan, whether it is uh, functioning or whether it is, uh, it is working or it is not working. So that is check. You monitor your performance towards the aims and objective. And fourth, you check. That is check. Uh, fourth is you act. So act refers to routine, routinely review progressive or the progress and change what you are doing if it looks like you are missing your targets. So this formula is based on any kind of organization. Any organization management system, they should follow this type of uh, management so that they can achieve their goals well. The first one, you plan, that is, you set your aims and objectives. Number two, you do, that is, you act upon the aims and objectives that have already planned. Number three, you always monitor, that is, check. You always monitor your plans and functions so that you see whether they are moving on well or not. And fourth, you act. How do you act? You review the progress of your plans and objectives. If the plans are working well, then you move on. Otherwise, if they are not working well, you, ha you always have a room for change so that you can improve in your management. If an organization plan to get attached or join this system of management, this type of organization or this type of business will follow this system of management. They will make the policy. They will also make the organization that is the uh, framework of management as we already stated before, we already defined. They will also plan and implementing their policies and they will always evaluate their plan. They will take action upon their plan and lastly, they will do audit or audit at the final or finally to see whether they are moving on well. So we are going to look step by step this system of management that is ILO 2001. The first one that is policy is also refers as plan. A clear statement has to be set or has to be made to establish health and safety as a prime commitment of management at all levels of organization, but particularly at the top. So when you are talking about the policy as the first, uh, the first means of management or occupational health and safety man management system for ILO 2001, we are talking about the clear framework or clear statement which needs to be made by the top management that all the other, uh, all the other staffs, all the other uh, management, the junior management will follow this plan. And this is made by the top management. We already know that the top management is made up of the managing director and the senior managers. We already said this before. So they are the one who will make the plan. That is, they will come up with the statement 
of how the management will uh, of the they will come up with the statement that is the policy uh, the, that the aims and objectives of the business number two organizing also it is still the plan it is a framework of roles and responsibilities for the health and safety must be created this must be created within the organization from the senior management down to the frontline workers including the appointment of special specialist staff so the organization or the organizing is referred to as the level of the management hierarchy that we already talked about that is the from the top management managing directors that is directors managing directors the managers that senior managers the line manage managers the supervisors and even the subordinates so this is what is referred to as organization or organizing which is part of the plan third planning and implementation and that is do that is the second one we have finished with the plan now we are going to do we take action after you plan your aims and objective of how the business will work what the business will be involved which type of uh, 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 pro, uh, which type of uh, operation will be will be taking place whether it is a production whether it is transportation type of business whether it is agriculture any kind of business is set out uh, in the goals and aims and objectives by the top management after you plan your goals and aims now you come to the uh, money, uh, implementation now you are doing you are taking action towards your plans and objective now in the planning and implementation that is due it gives the detailed arrangement so detailed arrangement must be made for the management of health and safety central of this idea is the concept of risk assessment and the identification and implementation of safety system of work and protective measures so when we come to the planning and implementation that is we are taking action towards our goals and objective we are majorly are uh, talking about the risk assessment and the identification and the implementation of health and safety system of work in order to protect the occupants and the business in terms of health and safety so here there is the involvement of risk assessment identification of risk and hazard and even implementation of those health and uh, health and safety work uh, uh, management system so the aim here is to protect each and every part of the organization from any kind of health and safety hazard and risks number four evaluation and here is check that is the third one said the first one is plan do check so we have plan we have uh, done that is we have set aside the risk we have put that we have checked the risk assessment that we have identified any kind of risk and hazard in the organization now we need to evaluate our work does our plan goes as planned or it is not working that is evaluation we are checking so the method must be uh, de de devised the method must be devised to monitor and review the effectiveness of the arrangement put into place so this might be done relatively or reactively for example the reviewing uh, by reviewing accident and ill health statistics or actively eg by reviewing inspection and reports now there are still something new here that is review the second one is reactive and third one here is active so all this we are going to look at in our next 
uh, video or in our next uh, elements, other elements as they're coming, as we proceed, we are going to look at active and reactive means of uh, uh, of handling some health and safety issues. And here I'll just explain uh, in brief, there is active, that active means you are acting, where you are acting to a situation before it escalates. You are acting for uh, in a situation before it worsen. That is, if you see any kind of risk within the organization, let's say you see a white, uh, a wet floor, you see oil on the floor, you are actively acting upon this one by calling the responsible cleaning department to remove, to, uh, uh, totally remove or clean this oil or any wet, uh, wet, uh, wet floor is dried so that it can prevent any unforeseen risk and accidents. That is active, taking action before any incident happen. Then there is reactive. Reactive means you are reacting after an action has already happened. For example, if there is a, an accident that has happened, now there must be an investigation. Why the accident happened, how it happened, what happened, who was involved. Now, this is what is referred to as reactive. You are reacting towards the incident that has already happened. So, here it has given an example. The ways or means of evaluation. How do you evaluate your work? By either active or reactive. And here is an example. Reactive example is... Reviewing accident and, health and ill health statistic. That is what we've already said. You are reacting towards something or accident that has already happened or ill health. So many workers in your organization are falling sick. So you need to take action. You need to, uh, to check what happens. What is normally happening? Why my workers are getting sick day in, day out? That is reactive. And it is also, there is also reactive means of evaluating your work. And active means of evaluating, there is also active means of evaluating your work. And here is an example, inspection report. Now, inspection is always done before work has started. You are inspecting the work environment and you are coming up with your report so that by the end of the, before the work starts, you already know that all the risk, you already know the, uh, the risk which are already present in the workplace, you eliminate them or you control them to the acceptable level. That is inspection. So you'll check the inspection report. You can also review the accident and ill statistic. Number uh, five, that is audit. Now in audit, is also referred to as check. It is also under check, evaluating, audit. All this is check. You are checking your work, uh, your work uh, movement, whether you are going on the right direction or you are not going in the right direction. So in check, arrangement must be made, or in audit, audit, arrangement must be made for the independent, systematic, and critical examination of the uh, management system to ensure that all parts are working acceptable level or acceptably well. So in audit, you are checking the ind independent management system and the systematic critical examination. So here there is critical examination of the uh, management system. How does the management work? Now here it's when you can decide whether you can have your inter internal auditor or external auditor. Internal auditor can be be work uh, can be one of the staff that will do all the audits for the whole organization, or you bring auditors from the local authority, that is from the government or from outside. So there is always advantages 
and disadvantages of both auditors as we are going to see in the coming elements. So audit is part of the check and the second one which is number six is action for improvement. Now you have your plan that is policy, organization that is still under plan, then planning and implementation that is your taking action towards your plan. Uh, for our fourth we have evaluation that is under check and audit that is under check and seven and six we have action for improvement now there is always a room for improvement if your business is not running in the right direction you now you have to check whether it is going on the right direction or not so here any shortcoming identified by the by the review process must be corrected as soon as possible by making whatever adjustable or adjustments are necessary to the policy organization and arrangement for implementation so here when you are taking action for improvement you will first check the policy you check the organization so you check the objective of your business second you will also check the uh, the, the, the organization that is your line of management, the managers, the supervisors, are you having the right people to do the job? So you will check, you will evaluate all this. Hmm? You will evaluate all this. And if all this are, that something is not in the right direction, you will quickly, uh, you will quickly correct the, the error and you move on with the, uh, your business and lastly continual improvement continual improvement and here the intention is that the management system will remain statistic but will develop over time to become increasingly appropriate and useful to the organization that it exists to serve so when you're talking about continual improvement we always say sky is the limit. So let's say your organization is moving on well. But always people aim higher. So there is always continual improvement. Let's say you started with, uh, let's say you are only are, uh, handling a business that involves raising of chicken. So you start with 400 or 100,000 chicken. Let's say you start with, uh, uh, let's say 100 chicken. So 100 chicken and only two houses, chicken houses, or 200 chicken with two chicken houses. And you see that your business is moving on well, or your organization is running on well. At, after the end of this given uh, period of time for the chicken, you see your business is running on well because you are making a profit after selling your chicken to the market. Now, there is always a room for improvement. And here, you have to plan on how to improve your business. So you started with 200. Now, because you have good profit, now you will double to 400. So the coming six months, you will have 400 chicken with four chicken houses and that is what we say continual improvement so this is the management system that each and every organization should follow now again here i'm talking about my brothers there out there and my sisters who are doing business who or who are planning to start a business the reason why Initially, I said health and safety and environmental knowledge is very much important, especially in the Bosch International General Certificate is because this knowledge equip or, or if you are impacted with this knowledge, my brother and sister, you will do anything on this earth. Because as we can see here that if you follow this system of management, you, you, you will already have the guideline of how your business will run. You will have the guideline of how you're going to run your business. And here, you will see that you need to plan, 
for your business, that is you need to set your goals. Number two, you need to have the right and qualified uh, management. Number three, you should always implement your work in terms of health and safety. Number four, number four evaluate. Always check whether your work is moving on the right direction or not. And again, you can bring an external auditor or you can have your own internal auditor amongst your staff to audit the movement of your business. And lastly, you always have the room to improve in your business. So it is stated here very well that in the routine and location and in the outline, uh, in the outline, in the outline, the location of each element in the PDCA, in the PDCA, in the outline, the location of each element in the PDCA cycle has been indicated in the uh, brackets after element title just to help. So here there is a, there is a, a here there is a, a link just in case you need more information related to ILO, that is International, International Labor Organization, 2001, you will get more information from this link, www.ilo.org slash safework slash info slash standards dash and dash instruments. So if you need more information related to ILO, ILO 2001, you will go to this link and you get more and more information related to International Labor Organization 2001, Man Occupational Health and Safety Management System. Thank you for being with me until the end of the learning, uh, learning outcome today. I really appreciate your time and make sure you follow this channel. You subscribe to the channel. If this knowledge is, you find it important to you, you subscribe to the channel, you like and even share the videos to other people so that we all get knowledge for health and safety and environmental so that we can move on well on in our we can work safe in our organizations let's meet in the next video thank you so much